today, though. Could everybody please welcome God up here? <laughs> we need a new God. I know. No, I'm serious. We need a new God. The old God isn't working anymore. The old one never worked. Well, some people think it did. They were not looking at the world around them. They were? Not honestly, not comprehensively. They were seeing only what they wanted to see. They were not seeing the cruelty, the fighting, the killing that was going on in God's name. They were not selling the separation and the oppression and the fear and the utter dysfunction. Or worse yet, they were seeing it, but they weren't playing into it. They used to use it as a means of controlling the people. <clears throat> And the truth that the old God, yesterday's God, might have made individual lives work here and there, perhaps even many of them, but that God was never able to create just a society or a joyful, joyful harmonious civilization to say nothing of a peaceful world. And that God can't do that even today. Even today, with all the powers of instant communication and total connection and advanced comprehension and increased awareness and sophisticated technology and marvelous miracles you can't produce that simple humble experience for which humanity has yearned from the beginning of time you can't produce peace i know you can't produce lasting joy i know and the god in whom you believe can't either why 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 can't all the best efforts of humanity and all the help that we've begged for and received from god produce these results because the God in whom you believe isn't real. The God in whom you believe is made up. It is the God that you created out of thin air, having nothing to do with ultimate reality. Well, there's a challenging thought. That's just about the greatest blasphemy. All great truth begins as blasphemy. The time to challenge your most sacred beliefs is at hand. And if you don't challenge your beliefs soon, your beliefs are going to challenge you. Now let's do it in German. <laughs> <laughs> Next time, maybe, when I come back from there. Um, that's an excerpt from Donald Walsh's book, uh, Tomorrow's God. Mm -hmm. And the reason I'm talking about this is uh, I always try to relate my talks to the spiritualist principles that we recite every day. So, And I, we don't always pay attention to what we're saying, but words are energy. So when we sit here and we recite those, we're putting that energy out into the world. And I think a lot of people are confused sometimes with what infinite intelligence means, because we've pulled that word out. As spiritualists, we don't use that word. And so people might question why we do that, right? Um, I was raised Catholic, and so as I was growing up, the word God to me meant some old man up in the sky, right? Some guy with a, by a white beard, kind of Santa Claus-ish looking, you know. I, you would hear things about him being, you know, you can't sin, and... I never thought of him that way. I always thought that he was some cool dude up there that just kind of took care of us. And I truly was one of those people that lived my life, even when I was little. My teen years were scary years for you know people who know me. I just was like blind faith. I just walked around thinking, well, somebody's watching over me. It'll be all right. Um, I, I, I just kind of had that understanding and that connection. And I questioned um, some of the things that were taught about God, and even when I was younger. So as I started my spiritual path in you know, later years, <coughs> that changed a little bit for me. When, you, when you're raised in a Christian faith um, and you have Bible teachings, you know that Genesis um, says, so God created mankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. So, when you become a spiritualist, or and I don't know that I knew that I was a spiritualist. I think I just am more uh, very metaphysical and, and have a broader understanding. I don't like to box my beliefs in, in any one little box. Uh, I start to wonder, well, what about animals, and what about you know, what about all the other things that we say that God is in, that God is part of? So if God created us in His image, then He created all that stuff in His image too, right? And so what does God really look like then? Um, what God do you believe in, right? 
the word to me, as I started learning more things about spiritual law, the law of attraction, the law of nature, the word to me seemed so small. And it could not possibly encompass what it really is. So when we say infinite intelligence, we're, 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 for me, we're surrounding that understanding just a little bit better. People used to ask me um, when I started my spiritual path, anybody who knows when you switch from a Christian faith to, to a New Age thought faith, to spiritualism or anything like that, people will start asking you, well, do you believe in God? Like, what do you believe now? Um, and I would always answer, no, I know God. I know God. And I use the word because other people understand the word, right? Not because that's how what I consider it, but because that's how I'm able to interact with other people so they understand what I'm saying. But for me, the word didn't fit. So I jumped and I started saying the universe because that seemed like a, A, it's a longer word. <laughs> but it's also just, you know, it just, it's, it, the word itself is expansive, right? And, and for me, that is what God is. It's this expansive, incredibly expansive energy. And I, I don't understand why we try and box it into something so small and why we try to, um, attach negative attributes to it. That doesn't make any sense to me at all, and it never has. So when we say our, our um, spiritualist principles, the number one, when we say we believe in infinite intelligence, in the late 1800s is when the spiritualist religion was created. And when they, when they decided, really it was created to protect mediums, right? Because mediums were being persecuted for talking to dead people. I mean, now we're, we're you know, talking witchcraft and, you know, craziness and, and people get persecuted for that and burned. Um, I'm sure I'm one of those in past lives that's been burned many times. But they, they needed a way to be able to protect these people, to allow them to practice their beliefs and the things that they did. And it really, spiritual in, spiritualism is about conveying that there is no death, and so we had to protect that. And when you go to study spiritualism, there's a lot of things that they had to sit down and really start to write down, like, what are the things that we believe and what do we not believe? Um, I had somebody recently say to us, well, spiritualists don't believe in reincarnation. That's not the truth. Spiritualists, part of them believe in reincarnation, some of them don't. They couldn't come to an agreement, you know, the ones that did or didn't. So they have decided collectively, um, and this is just the NSAC, since we're independent, we just kind of do what we want here. <laughs> but, but we still practice the main principles. But what they decided was we can't come to an agreement. We have dead people on the other side talking. How come we're talking to them when they should be here? Um, I know personally that I've been able to communicate or get com not get communication because I know that somebody's back here. So what they decided as a whole was we're just not going to speak of this on our podiums. On our platforms we will pull this subject out and not, and not use it um, because we can't come to an agreement. So the things that we can come to an agreement are, are listed here. And when we decided about God, originally the first principle did say we believe in God. But then they had to sit down and start thinking about, well, is God really that little word, that man in the sky? So you have to think about way back, this was in the late 1800s, that they decided to write this differently. And they were like, we, it's an infinite intelligence. And what they came to, the reason they came to that and how they brought the understanding was that the principle expresses a belief in the divine source. In the Christian world term God, spiritualists recognize this servant, I'm sorry, spiritualists recognize this source in a greater scope of awareness. God cannot be limited to an anthropomorphic, which means human likeness, being, but must be all-inclusive, omnipotent, omnipresent, and manifesting through all forms of life and matter. And so we decided there's an intelligence behind all the things that happen. And I, I connect to these little, these little tidbits on a regular basis. Um, at the end of May, I was, out, I was on a cruise and I was out in the open ocean. And that is such a, when you walk out and all you see is water, for, there's nothing else but water around you. First and foremost, the sea, the ocean, to me, is, is intimidating. 
and it's also incredibly miraculous. But really, it's infinite intelligence. How much of this earth is covered in water? More water than land, this planet is. And we're so used to being on land that when we get out to the water and we start to think about the depth of the water, the incredible depth of it, like there's parts of the ocean that we haven't even been able to explore the intelligence behind something like that. And, the, and there's life in the ocean. So again, we come back to this, well, who created the life? If it was God, and God created, you know, things, man in his own image, then what did he just decide? How do, you, how do you come up with these other animals then, right? How do you come up with all these other things that you've created? They must be part of you also, for you to create such a thing. So those are the moments when I sit and I'm like, wow, you know, um, this is just, I like to say it's a miracle, but really it's, it's just intelligence working at an incredible rate. The other thing that I recently, and this is not something that I research or study a lot, but when we talk about life outside of this planet, and the fact that we are in a galaxy, and there are many galaxies, well, does God just run the one galaxy, or does he run all the galaxies? And if he runs all the galaxies, what about those people that people keep saying they see these, you know, aliens? Are they in God's image? Or not? Or only men? And so, does God... Did he create them, or did he create themselves? And so you have to start thinking about, okay, it's, there's something bigger out there. There's something more out there. This energy that we are a part of is not this guy sitting up, you know, behind the pearly gates. The energy that we share, this, I mean, it's, it's, it's a stream of consciousness that flows beyond just <clears throat> this room and this city and this, even this planet, it goes on and on. So we have to think about, we have to remember that the word God means so much more than, than what we attribute to it. And the power behind it is so much stronger than what we give it credit for. The other thing that I, that I, um, that I always call miraculous, and it probably sounds kind of lame, is the human body. Um, there's a, an exhibit called, it's the bodies, it's called Bodies Exhibit, and somebody took human bodies and they plasticized them, but they cut them like in layers, and so you see all the different layers of the body and how it works. And um, you have to think that at some point there was a cell that started all this, and it created this house that our, that our souls are in. And just the, the sheer, like, it, again, the intelligence behind it, behind, you know, creating the machine that we have, that we walk around in. Um, it's, you know, if you really sit and think about it, you're like, wow, that's pretty fantastic. I mean, it definitely needed some intelligence beyond, beyond my intelligence, for sure. Above my pay grade, way mm -hmm. above it. Mm -hmm. So spiritualism conceives God to be an infinite intelligence. The law of all nature, and it is understood that these laws are constant, immutable, and ever-present. So I ask when you read these principles and you're looking at the word infant intelligence, understand that yes, it's connected to the word God that, that Christianity created. But it really describes the universal consciousness and the everything that we are. Thank you.